I'm editing those photos from my last video today. If you haven't watched that video yet, make sure you go watch it up here. If you haven't watched that video yet, I definitely recommend it. I pretty much had a bunch of my mates down there uh, on this side of the road where we took um, Paul's EP cover photo, so um, that was definitely fun. It wasn't just fun because I had my mates there. The photography aspect of it was very fun too. We pretty much took long exposures of it, you know, I'm not even going to explain it. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go watch it. Uh, but in today's video, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be editing those photos that we took. So I'll be jumping into Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, we're going to be building Paul's EP cover photo and um, editing that other image that we took for him. So let's jump into the Lightroom. Okay, so as I said before, we're going to be using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop today uh, for Paul's EP cover. So as you can see here, I'm in Lightroom now. And we've got eight photos that we took from the night. So I'm just going to quickly go through them, you know, explain a little bit about the photo. So as you can see on this one here, so this was the first photo we took for Paul. Uh, it's the really wide angle shot um, for his, I'm pretty sure he's going to use this one for his YouTube banner, overall profile pic, things like that. So we'll edit that later. Uh, then we go on to this one. Now this is the first photo that we took for his cover photo. Mostly it was a bit of a test run. As you can see, he's very bright in the highlights there. But for this shot, we actually had the car weave between me, the camera, and him, Paul. So it weaved from me, in around, and then back around. So because we used this as a test shot, we didn't like how Paul was so far back, so we brought him forward. So as you can see in the next shot, he's filled in the frame more, but it was a bit of a dud with the light trails. We had Tom only go, I think, a quarter of the way. So he weaved, he weaved from the right, he sort of ended at the middle of the road and then swung back around so you couldn't see, we couldn't see the light trail on the left side of the image. I think a truck went past on the highway here, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, that was another test shot we took. We took this one. Now this one was actually funny because we had a car come across the road halfway through our shot. So I was probably about 15 seconds in and the 30 second exposure. We had to run off the road because the car went past, so I had to pick up the camera, we all had to run off the road. That's actually in the video, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, but yeah, so that was another failed attempt. Now we're starting to get the goods here. We were getting Tom to weave better, he was doing a fantastic job. So yeah, we really liked the weaving here, but we wanted more of the light trails. So what we ended up doing was um, sitting Paul down on the ground. And as you can see here, I'll zoom in. Check out those light trails, they go, they go right from the right of the frame all the way up to the left, right around down the road to the end here. And um, that's really what we wanted. This is kind of cool too because we've got the, um, the highway truck again going past. So we're on the right track here. So this shot was another test shot for, the next, for this new composition. And then we finalized that again to get this, wait, this one. So we're pretty happy with the overall composition of this photo. Uh, we've got the nice light trails all the way, weaving all the way up to the top of the road. Paul's posing, you know, the pose how he wanted. So we took that. We also took this one here, which was just a 2.5 second exposure, as you can see up here. And I just quickly flashed my phone light on Paul so we could get a bit of a um, higher quality image on him. So we got that. And that's a, he didn't move in that time. So we've got that one and we've got that one. And as you can see, he's, he's not moving. He's exact same position. It's lucky we got these two safe shots because looking at this shot now, I'm actually gonna have to cut this to a square crop. I'll just quickly do it here. Hit R on the keyboard. You hit one by one. And we're gonna get the weaves like that. Probably about there. So looking at this image now, Paul's completely cut out we got his feet where we want the whole of him in the image so I've actually composed this shot wrong because the road ends on the left so we have to cut we have to crop in quite a bit um, so that's the problem I'm dealing with now but 
Uh, we'll just undo this. Done. Alright, yeah, so uh, it's lucky we got this shot here because that's what's going to allow us to build the image. So I'm actually going to use Photoshop. We'll be able to create this EP cover for him. Okay, so let's go back to grid. I'm actually going to get rid of these shots. Uh, I'm only put them there to show you, you know, explain the night because I know in the video, I know in the vlog of actually taking these photos, it was a bit hectic and I wasn't able to film what I was going through. So I thought I'd just explain um, how I did it really. So we're going to grab these and we're just going to not delete them, but I'll remove them from that. Now these are three images that we're going to be using. All right, so we'll start with this. I'm just going to go through quickly how I edit. It'll be a quick edit. So we're going to hit D on my keyboard to open up the develop tab in Lightroom. Uh, and what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with lens corrections. So remove chromatic corroboration and enable profile collections, which will bring up my lens profile. So because I was using the Sigma 10 to 20 mil, the, the 10 millimeter, I shot this at 10 millimeters. It's a very, very wide lens. And with wide lenses, distortion happens in the image. So if I turn this off, you can see the, um, there's quite a lot of dark vignetting on the edges of the image. Yeah, so if I turn that off and on, uh, it's actually brought the image out a bit because it's so wide, it's, it's curving in. Uh, Lightroom does a really good job at fixing that up. So that's the first thing I do when editing a image. Uh, next, I'm gonna fix the colors. So we're gonna go in here. I'm actually gonna pick a profile first. So in the basic tab, you can pick a profile. Let's see how portrait looks. Standard. What's color look like again? Landscape's a bit too saturated for this, for this image. I think we're gonna work with standard. It's just a standard profile. Um, most of my landscape images I use landscape because it brings out the colors a bit more and all that but we, we use this standard for this one uh, and then I'm going to fix my white balance straight up because I can see that the, the trees are quite pinky looking, magenta looking so it's already at minus four um, I'll just drag this down a bit, see how here we go see how dragging that down it brings a bit more greens out in the in the trees there so we're going to probably put that maybe 21 for and after here. Yep. Uh, and then I'm actually going to add some blues because I know it's a bit yellowy. So yeah, that looks, that looks all right. So colors first. Uh, another thing that's bugging me straight up, I'm going to hit R, which brings up the crop and we're going to fix this I've actually shot this image on a bit of a slant, so we're going to fix that. Uh, if the angle's a bit wrong, so I'm just going to drag this up like that. Align it with the road, that looks good. Uh, I might center him a bit more too. Tedious work this is. Alright, that looks good. Hit done. Okay, so we're still in the basic tab here, and now we're gonna fix the exposure of the image. Uh, so what I do first is actually play with the exposure. So hitting the exposures tab, seeing if it's a bit, you know, dark. I'm actually gonna raise it up, probably about there, 21. Uh, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix the white and black clippings. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna um, drag the highlights down drag the shadows up and then we're going to hit we're going to start with the blacks and I'm going to hit alt on the keyboard and drag this down until we start to get this peaking it's called um it's called black peaking black clipping I'm pretty sure that I'm no I'm no professional but this this is essentially what I do with every image um, it was what I was taught and yeah I've done it ever since so we're going to drag this down see if I can I drag this all the way down to minus 100 you can see that the where it is black in the image is where it's true black. So you can see Paul's legs are true black. That's not what we want. Because if I let go, if I let go of Alt, see how it's just it's too dark. The image is too dark. So we hit an Alt, and I'm gonna put it about there. We want some peaking because some photos do have true black. So we're gonna we're gonna bring that about maybe there, 17 minus 17. I know the image still looks funny because it's because the highlights are down and the shadows are up. So we're going to do the same with the whites, 
dragging it up this time and hitting alt on the keyboard. See how we're starting to get a bit, a bit of peaking there. Let's see how that looks, 49. So usually uh, with the whites, for some reason, I like to drag it down a little bit more. So we're at 49 with the peaking and I'm gonna probably drag it down to 39, 37. That, that looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, double click the shadows, double click the highlights, which will bring both of them to uh, zero. And we're gonna look at maybe dropping the highlights or raising, no, definitely dropping it. So I'm gonna drop the highlights just a tiny bit. We're just gonna zoom in here on Paul because uh, mainly his shirt is what we're worried about. 44 looks good, minus 44. I'm gonna zoom out and do the shadows now. Maybe bring some shadows out in those trees. A bit more detail. 24, sit the before and after. It's looking good. Uh, okay, so now I'm, I'm quite happy with this so far. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna uh, play with the presence of the image. So this texture tool I usually use, but not too much. I only plus two, plus four is as much as I do. Clarity, clarity always looks good in an image. It's one of the things I struggle with as a landscape photographer. I find myself playing with every single slider, and I know there's um, there's professionals out there that don't even use half of the half of the um, sliders in Lightroom. So that's one of the, my drawbacks I'm having at the moment. You know, I don't see it affecting the image that much. I still play with every single slider, so we're gonna probably put that to plus 14. Uh, D haze, I really like the D haze makes an image a bit clearer to me plus 12 that looks good okay now we're going to bring some contrast into it we either bring some contrast into it or bring some contrast out of it um, and i'm thinking so i'm just playing with the slider here i'm thinking i'm going to bring some in so i might go plus 11 and I might have to brighten it up a tiny bit, like that, plus 31, that looks good. Okay, now we've done that. Before we play with the vibrance and saturation, I'm gonna go into the tone curve. And um, I haven't mastered this part of image processing yet. Um, a lot of people use the tone curve only. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's one thing I need to learn still. What I generally do now for my landscape photos is this, so um, I'll just play here on the highlights, the lights, the darks, and the shadows. So starting up here with the highlights, I just drag up and down until I see where I like it. Uh, da, da, da. Maybe plus, plus nine looks good. Lights, now for this image we're gonna bring the lights down. Plus 16. Darks, we're gonna bring the darks back into it, plus five. And the shadows, I'm gonna bring up to about plus three. Hitting before and after, it's looking good. Okay, now we're done with the tone curve. We're gonna add some vibrance. Going back to the basic panel, we're gonna add some vibrance. Just bring those greens out, plus 11 looks good. And only a little bit of saturation. I might bring that vibrance down a bit, there we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good for this image. The only thing left to do uh, is the detail before we start refining the image a little bit more. For this, I've got a preset using for all my detail uh, and all I play with is the mark skin. So hitting Alt again, I drag this all the way down until we start to get that white peaking on Paul. Not too much, about 86. Uh, and then we're gonna bring in noise reduction to around 11, 12 maybe. Might zoom in. We don't wanna lose too much detail in his skin. So you can see it's sort of losing a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it down to 11 maybe. Let's have a look at it. Yep. That's looking good. And then I'm gonna bring the color uh, reduction up to 30. Okay, let's look at the before and after. It's looking good. 
I might bring a little bit more uh, tint into it, a bit more magenta tint. Maybe minus, minus, minus 16. We don't want too much pinks in there. Okay, so that's pretty much done for all these. You know, I can spend the time playing around with the HSL, uh, but it's not needed for this image. It's a pretty, pretty simple photo. There's heaps of other great, um, you know, tabs here to play with. Uh, but yeah, they're the main I use. Now before, before I finish, I'm actually going to grab the graduated filter. And I like to do this trick with, um, with anything that has a road in it. Um, so I'm going to start here and I'm going to drag up just a tiny bit. About there. Drag that there. Maybe drag that down a bit more. And we're going to, so that, that brought the exposure up, but we're going to bring the exposure down. So I'm going to bring it down. So you see how it brings out the cool details in the road here. So we're actually going to bring that all the way down to probably a one stop. Put that up to there. And then we're going to add clarity, quite a bit of clarity, which will lighten it up, uh, but also add, you know, very cool detail to the road. Maybe plus 40. Um, I still have a bit of OCD with my um, sliders. For some reason, I can keep the, you know what, I'm not even gonna go into it. OCD with Lightroom, it's a real killer. You know, 41, 39, 41, 30, 40, finally. <laughs> All right, uh, what's next? So that is pretty much done. See, I, I can toggle this on and off. So if I toggle that on, See the difference? Off, on, off. I just like it, you might not like it. So that's done for that. Now, the images are looking a bit dark, so I might just brighten it up a bit more. That's looking good, plus 51. No, plus 41, okay. Uh, then the final thing I'll do is bring up a radial filter. I'm gonna drag this over Paul. So what the radial filter does, it's a bit like the graduated filter, um, but a radial, a circle. So we're gonna drag this around him. So the exposure's up one, it's one stop, that's why it looks a bit funny so far. Uh, and then we're gonna bring the feather all the way to a hundred, uh, no, hundred. We're gonna make it a bit bigger, just cause we don't wanna see it too much. So that looks good now. Uh, and then we're gonna bring the exposure down, double clicking. And this, for this, I'm just going to add a bit of, you know, I'm just going to add a bit of exposure into um, Paul himself. So it just makes him pop a little bit more. So maybe about plus 50. And then I'm going to drag the highlights down. Plus 16. That's looking fine. Do I want to do anything else? Might add some clarity, just a little bit. Some texture and some dehaze. I'm actually going to add quite a bit of, not too much, dehaze. That's looking good. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see it just brings out, um, makes him, it makes him pop a little bit more. So you can see on, off, on. That's looking good. Hit done. Okay, let's look at the final image. There we go. So, this is the before, this is the after. So that's pretty much done for that image. We're gonna go back to the grid, hitting G on the keyboard. So that's done and we're gonna move on to the next image. So now we're gonna move on to the next image uh, and we're gonna develop the cover photo for Paul's EP. So I just need to sort of work out what I'm gonna do here. What I think I'll do, I'll edit the images only slightly, bring them into Photoshop, fix it up, develop the image, uh, and then I'll bring it back into Lightroom and do final touches. So, what we're gonna start with first, we're gonna start with this one. Hitting D on the keyboard to bring up the develop tab. Uh, we're gonna go down here, lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration and over profile corrections. It's looking good. Now, detail, where we are. Let's go up to the basic tab. Um, now, all this background up here doesn't matter. So I'm gonna keep the crop. 
I'm gonna bring this to standard. I'm gonna keep the white balance. I might, so I'm gonna bring the exposure up and we'll do the same here. So because I already explained what I do whilst editing my images, um, I'm just gonna fast forward this um, because I know it can be a bit boring. So let me be and I'll see you in what, maybe two minutes. Look at Paul's head. <laughs> uh. Okay, so I'm done that image. I'm gonna move on to the next one um, and do the same, just basic edits. That's all I did. You know, raise the exposure, fix the blacks and whites and um, do the lens corrections. What else did I do? And the tone curve. Um, so that's, that's mainly what we're gonna do. White balance is okay for both images because they were shot a bit dark. So we'll move on to the next one. Uh, keep in mind for this image, I'm actually just, I'm not, I'm forgetting the exposure for Paul. So in the last image, I um, exposed Paul correctly. And in this image, I'm exposing the top half of the image correctly, which is the sky uh, and the light trails. Okay, so that is done for both images now. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the grid, and I'm just gonna hit E on the keyboard and just flick through both of them. So they're both looking good there. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the grid here, and what we're gonna do now, before I bring both of these images into Photoshop, I'm actually gonna crop this to. Uh, I'm gonna crop the second image to how Paul wants it and um, because it's an EP cover, which is an album cover essentially, uh, it needs to be one by one. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna here, we're gonna hit R, which brings up the develop tab, but it opens the um, crop tab as well. So I'm gonna go aspect ratio one by one. I'm gonna drag all the way in. So because Paul's out of the image here, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna bring this up uh, to where I like it. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna center. I'm gonna center the light trails in the top third of the image, which is this bar here that you can see. Um, let's see how that looks. And I'm not gonna keep it out this far because we've got the light trails extending all the way to the right side of the image. I want it to extend all the way to the left side of the image too. So we're gonna crop this in just so it's past there like that. So when I hit uh, when I hit done. And bring that up full screen. So hitting F on the um, on the keyboard, you can see the light trails extend all the way over, and this sort of centers the uh, the whole image a bit more. So essentially, when I shot it, I wasn't centered enough. I thought we thought we were, uh, but yeah, maybe I think it's because it's a wide angle lens. It's just sort of messed it up a bit, um, and it was dark, so you can't blame me for that. So. What we're going to do now, we're going to cut pull out. Uh, okay, we're going to go back to the grid and we're going to open both of these in Photoshop. I'm just going to fix this crop one more time. Make sure I'm happy with it. Let's have a look at that full screen. All right, this will look really good when Paul's centered more. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to hit grid and I'm going to select both of them, hitting control, right clicking and edit in Adobe Photoshop. That's going to bring up Photoshop now. And we're going to edit. I'm essentially going to cut Paul out from the lighter image and paste him in the other image. So let's see how this turns out. Oh my god, Photoshop can take forever sometimes. Hooray, we've got them open. Okay. So now we have both images up in Photoshop. As you can see here, we've got that one. We got this one. I'm actually gonna start with the foreground image, which is this one of Paul. What we're gonna do, because it doesn't have to be that accurate, I'm not gonna use any sort of selection tool, um, which would, would be pretty tedious. There is probably a quicker way, there is probably a better way to do this, but essentially what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the eraser tool. 
and pretty much rub out the parts of this image that we don't need and then copy it into the other image which is the background image so yeah I've got I've got the foreground image up here and we're gonna just grab the eraser tool here I'm gonna what I'm gonna do first before I do that I'm gonna zoom in uh, control plus zoom in to Paul's head sorry Paul I know you're probably watching this and you're probably not that happy that your face is everywhere so I apologize for that. Anyway, we're gonna zoom into his head. Yeah, about that much. All right, and then I'm gonna bring up the eraser tool. I'm gonna to put the size to maybe, no, we want the size to maybe about 50. We need the hardness all the way to 100. That needs to be a bit smaller, so we're gonna bring that to 25, I'd say. Hmm, even smaller, 10. Size 10. Right here. Uh, and then I'm gonna pretty much rub him out. Why is that doing what? That's wrong. Hold on. Control Z, Control Z. What's what's happening? Ah! Oh. So you have to unlock the image. Um, yeah, so you have to unlock the image. Usually when you open Photoshop images they um they lock and you can't you can't rub them. So we're gonna unlock it, which will allow me to um essentially look rub onto a transparency and then that's what gets transferred onto the image so we're going to undo here and we're going to we're going to what i'm going to do i'm going to trace all around here around his head um neatly so i'll fast forward that because that's boring and see you in two minutes So I've cut out his head. Um, you can see it's a pretty rough job, um, but it doesn't have to be that accurate because the images are actually very similar. And to be honest, you won't even notice unless I told you. Oh, well, I guess I am telling you. So just just forget about it. You won't even you won't even notice. If you didn't know, you wouldn't notice. But you do know, so. I don't care, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so that's done now. I'm gonna zoom back out. So we can, we've cut out his head and I've gotta work out, looking back at the, the other image, I gotta work out where I wanna place him. So I wanna place him probably just so he's covering this here. So I'm gonna go down to maybe around this part of his shoulders, halfway down. So we zoom back in. Oh, not that much. Uh, zoom back in and we're going to go here. We're going to go back into the rubber tool, select this layer. And I'd say rub down to maybe that line in his shirt there. Now, okay, so here comes the tricky part. What we're going to do is zoom in. Not too much. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna come up here to the eraser tool, and we're gonna play with the settings here. Now there's a great setting where you can um, put like a, a soft brush on. So I'm gonna bring the size up to maybe a bit, a bit, a bit of, I'm gonna be looking at maybe maybe a 200 size brush. That looks that looks good. And we're gonna bring the hardness all the way down to zero. And I'm actually gonna start here, so you can see here. Look, if I drag down here. As you can see, it's not a hard brush. It's a gradient from it's a gradient from totally erased to not not erased at all. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to hit Control Z. I'm not going to use it next. Actually, I'm going to use it on the next one. So we're going to we're going to bring this back down to probably no. We're going to we're going to bring it probably about 50. We're going to bring the hardness back up, and I'm essentially. Where are we at? Zooming in. And I'm going to start about here and just go up like that. Mm. 
make sure that's connected. Make sure that's connected. Alrighty. So now, I pretty much just drag this layer into the other layer and drop it. So you can see here, you can see where I've done those erase lines. Um, and we're essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually make pour smaller. So this is the beauty of Photoshop. You can just play with anything. So 70 is too small, 80, maybe 81. No, that's 10, 81. Yep, 81. So we're gonna use 81. I'm gonna plus that. Okay, so now he's a bit smaller. Now all I will have to do. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, line him in the middle, just like that. Like that, and I'm gonna make sure his feet are just at the bottom of the frame. There, like that. Make sure that's centered. Beautiful. So now you can see if I toggle this eye on and off. So this is the this is the background image. Ignore Paul in the corner here. All right. So now what I have to do, I have to actually erase the I have to erase the layer one image, which is the foreground image. I have to erase. I have to pretty much erase the um, background into the foreground image. Now that's confusing. I'm confusing myself. I'm probably confusing you. I just I don't know what I'm doing. Yep, there's no way I can explain it, I'm no pro. Anyway, all right, so we're zooming in, zooming in. So what I'm gonna do now, there is a method to my madness, I guess. Here we go, we're gonna go hit a layer one, which is the foreground image, and we're gonna bring the opacity, 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 no, opacity. I've known this word for three years now, I still forgot, I forgot how to say it. Opacity, we're gonna bring the opacity down to 50. So we're gonna bring the opacity to 50. Um, and you can see now that you can see both images um, pretty clearly. Might bring it back up to about 70. That's fine. 80 maybe. No, 70, that's good. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna raise Paul. Uh, we're gonna, not erase Paul. We wouldn't wanna erase Paul. We want to raise the foreground image, which has got Paul in it. We're going to raise that out so that we can see the light trails. So here, just watch. That's it. <laughs> That's looking cool. Yep, that looks very cool. So I hope you enjoyed how I go through editing my photos. This one here was a bit different, the cover photo. I don't usually use Photoshop for anything, but um, yeah, it was fun to use that again. So we got that done and um, I'm gonna send them off to Paul, see how he likes them. We're gonna post it everywhere. Uh, essentially what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna send those off to him. See what he thinks. If there's anything he wants to change, I can drag it all. I can always drag it back into Lightroom and fix that up for him. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. Hopefully he's happy with it. Um, see, I had fun making this for Paul. Um, if you haven't checked him out yet, I'll make sure I put all his socials up and you can go check it out. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you next time.